morning and welcome to the Carla Marie and Anthony Show. My name is Anthony. I'm Carla Marie. You are the show, so thank you for being here. Thank you for jumping in our live Twitch chat. Uh, we decided this week or last week that uh, we are going to take a break from being live on YouTube. Mm. Um, we just didn't know if it was worth it. There'd only be a couple people in there every morning. And even though it's easier for, pe for people who don't know us to find us on YouTube, uh, it creates a bunch of like technical things that have to go right to make that happen. So we said, you know what? We're going to go old school. Just going to go to Twitch. Yeah, I, I trusted your um, opinion on this one. When don't you trust my opinion? Sometimes. Oh. You're right there. God bless I'm allergic you. to this show. You might be. I've been fine. You might be. Maybe you should quit. <laughs> <laughs> Go find a new show that you're not allergic to. I think that your opinion sometimes is probably not the best. I disagree. I think my <laughs> opinion is always the best. But I, I let you have some wins. What, what? When have I been wrong? When you wouldn't let me post about the PBS show. <laughs> No, that wasn't. No, no, that was no, a, no. That was an Anthony. I still stand by that. No, I, I, it is one of my biggest regrets that I listened to you when it came to PR and marketing. It's still, I still think I'm right. So let's explain the issue here. We got to film with Joel, who was on the show. Mm, Joel Gamble. Uh, back in November, mm -hmm. right after, either before or after Thanksgiving. I can't remember. It was before. I think it was Joel before. Was. Right. And we wanted, we didn't want to post right away because we didn't know even, and the show producers didn't know when the show was going to air. However, they did tell us we can post that we of are going to be on the show. Please feel free to promote the show. But in my mind, and I still think I'm right about this, I said, well, we can't. I don't want to promote a show that we can't drive people to yet. Because that's more just like, oh, look at us. We were on TV, blah, blah, blah. That's literally what so the So lame. Is. So lame. Everything we do on social media is bragging. Yeah, no, I don't think so. True, 100%. I, think I, I went to Japan. I got to see Mount Fuji. That's literally how all social media is. No, I think the TV thing would have been different. Because TV, if everything worked according to schedule, which it never does, we would have been able to not only talk about the fact that we were on the show, but drive people to that show but to help the people that helped us. But PBS. That was my thing. But PBS is different than almost any other network. network or station out there because even if it's a national PBS show, right, PBS can come down and say, hey, everyone has to air the show. They get to air most things outside of their cartoons and their one news program kind of whenever they want. Yeah. And in what it seems like in whatever order they uh, want I don't to know about the order. Um, so we just, even though we knew the show, Homemade Live was going to air in January. Nobody could tell us when it was going to air in any specific city. So then it threw everything off. So I still blame PBS, and my opinion was right. I, no, PBS was wrong. Their whole scheduling system is off. Unless, of course, PBS, you want to put us on TV. Thank you, Claire. Then we're good. A little heads up doesn't hurt. Team CM. Mm. We were, like, living in secret. Like, we were going to be on The Bachelor. <laughs> I'm like, it's a, it's a PBS show. Yeah. It was a cool show to be a part of. Yeah. And maybe Thank you, and Meg. Maybe now that it's going into season two, the team will know when every episode is going to air nationally. Because that was the thing. Our episode could have aired at 9 o'clock on Listen a Wednesday in Boston or four o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday in Seattle. Again, I'm I'm really I apologize for bringing this up because no one needs to hear this. But the argument was for me yeah. that posting about it in November, like, hey, we're on the set because we get to do this mm. really cool thing. You might hit people that are never going to see put something you post six months yeah. later. So the more you post. The more people you're going to hit, the different people you're going to hit. And I will never yeah. in my existence trust you when it comes to promoting something on social media again. That was the only time I did. Mm. And it was my biggest failure. Mm. What are your biggest videos, Carla Marie? What are your most successful videos on Instagram? Cat videos. Of? Cats. Actually, I think one of them doesn't even have a cat, booger queen. Meg said, I'm on CM Island here. Why would you not want to talk about the show you were on? We could follow Joel on social media and check local listings for the show. The sound effect well, is perfect. Well, that wasn't suggested by you. 
thank you for the suggestion a year late almost. If yeah, you had that suggestion, maybe I would have said, oh, that's a good idea, Carla Marie. I cannot. Uh, thank you to everyone who has kicked it's off happening. today's hype train. We are uh, through level two in level three. And obviously, if you uh, know the show, oh if God. we, oh, we're through level three as well. These are all subs that agree with me. If we get through hype train level five, mm-hmm. we complete level five, we will be uh, ripping a shot. Are you taking one today, Carla Marie? I mean, yeah, I'm headed to the airport, so. Why not? Ripping shits at the airport. Um, so Rain sent a message in here which reminded me something. Mm. So yesterday I was driving back um, to after getting my eyebrows waxed in Capitol Hill, and I was in, in, like, downtown Seattle area. And I'm coming down the street, and at the bus stop, I'm like, bus stop. I see someone standing, and I was like, that's Rain. I just knew it. And I pull up, and I go, Rain! <laughs> and it was, like, the best moment because they had no idea, like, what was about yeah. to, like, who is yelling my name, looks up, and I was like, hi. And Rain's like. That is pretty cool. Carla Marie. And I was like, bye. And the light turned green. Yeah. I was like, you look great. It made my day. Um, I wish, I, wish I was there. I'm uh, going to start doing drive-bys of all our listen- <laughs> listeners. <laughs> You're going to have to get drive pretty far. Um, all right. On the list today, let's go through this. We do have our Costa Rica field trip. If you have not booked your trip yet and you'd like to, make sure you do it as soon as you can because those uh, – once people start booking, those early bird specials are going to be gone. And if you want to go, you should save 200 bucks mm-hmm. and get your early bird special. And remember, you don't have to put all the money down right away. You can put 25% down and yeah, then pay as you go right. until the final day if you want. Um, so that is available, I think. If, Claire, you can throw the, uh, the link in there, mainly because you've just been doing that for a while, so I want to – See if we can keep that going. Uh, Nara, thank you very much for that subscription with Prime. Appreciate that. And Sweet Eats by V just gifted 500 bits, so thank you. And Carla Maria has a movie night coming up. I do. Okay, I'm really excited about and this. And this is just Seattle, obviously. Yes. Well, I mean, you can fly out here. So, Colleen Hoover fans know that It Ends With Us is hitting theaters next month. However, I have the opportunity to fill a movie theater for free prior to it hitting theaters. So I'm going to send the link in here now. This is, uh, it, it is August 5th, and just because you fill out this form does not mean you 100% get a seat. That's just something to note that um, they over, Sony overpacks the, yeah. the list on purpose because they need to ensure that the theater is full. That's just how this works. And a lot of people will take up spaces like immediately and then realize they can't go or something comes up and they don't want empty seats there. Yes. So um, I'm going to put the link in here. Sign up. Tell all your friends to sign up. There's no like limit. And just get there early and get in line. That is the best thing I can tell you. So I'm going to put this in here right now. I'm very, very excited for this movie. So – what which is the movie? It ends with us, mm-hmm. and but there's I'm seeing in the chat there's a movie called It Starts with Us. Yes, that's the second one. It starts with us is the second one. Threw me off. I almost read them backwards. So it ends with us is the first one. Yeah. It starts with us is the second one. Is there a third one? It continues with us. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it starts. I almost read them backwards. Da- I think it was Danielle even read them backwards. Monero. It would make sense. You start and then you end. I know. She didn't think that. So one. is it starts with us a prequel to it ends with us? Like, no. can you read them out of order? No. So it's a full follow up. No. It's a full sequel. Yeah. Do you want me? To, I don't want to spoil her what it means. I don't care. No. To the people. Well, I guess if you have. What you, has what the title means? What it ends like? You don't find out to like the last oh, okay. line. Then don't. Then then don't give that out. Uh, Allison said I'd fly to Seattle for this. Well, you're more than welcome. We are in hype train level four, 65% of the way there with 30 seconds or so left. So we'll see if we can get through level four because once you get through a level, it restarts that like five minute timer mm-hmm. to get through the following level. So we'll see. We got 25 seconds left here. Um, next on the list, speaking of money, mm. I kind of wish this person was – a subscriber, a reviewer of our show, because I think we'd be uh, in a pretty good spot. And so another example of the fact that some people just have too much money. Mm. There is a CEO of a hedge fund 
who just yesterday won an auction. It took about 15 minutes. There were about six other people in this auction. Won the auction with a bid of around $45 million for one of the best preserved stegosaurus skeletons in the world. Where do you put that? It seems like he is going to work with some sort of American institution, some okay. museum, uh, to to display it, but it it will be his. So when you go to the museum, it'll be like on display thanks to the generous donation of what's his name, Keith Ken. Hold okay, on, so the money is going somewhere. Good. Then uh, I don't. Know, the money is going to whoever owned it in the first but place. Like, listen, I get it. We should be exploring dinosaurs. Ken and figu- Griffin is his name. Figuring out how they all died and finding them. I. I Listen, I love, I'm all for dinosaurs in space. They're yes. like my two favorite things. However, that $45 million could have fed real live people that aren't fossils. It is a 150 mil- million year old stegosaurus named Apex and measures 11 feet tall and nearly 27 feet long from nose to tail. And it is a nearly complete skeleton with 254 fossil bone elements. That's a stupid name. Apex was only expected to sell for about six million dollars. Also stupid that they went. So that even way. the auctioneers said we we value this thing at six million dollars, but a couple of billionaires said no, no, no. We got way more than that. Why would they? Isn't a stegosaurus? Doesn't it just eat plants? Yes. So why would they call it Apex? I don't know. It's a great question. Also, it should be named Sarah. It says the Apex was discovered on private land in Colorado. So uh, in that, twi- let's see. So does that money go to the person whose private land it was? Maybe, or maybe the team that excavated it along with the property owner, and they all get to split it. I have no idea. But it looks like this guy also, here's here's what's crazy. <sighs> he also spelt, spent almost another $45 million, 43.2, on a first edition copy of the Constitution. That's kind of crazy. So this man owns the Constitution. No, wait. Isn't the Constitution in the, in the National Museum? It's a, a first edition copy, so it's not the original, but it is the first time. It is the first run of copies they made of the Constitution. How did they make copies? Someone else sat there with a feather pen and wrote it. No, they had like the printing press. You would make a copy of. You'd put everything on there, and then you would what just size press out is copies. This? I can look it up. It's not like regular paper. This guy got. What he, do you think? He got like a, a scroll. Uh, let's see. It, it looks, looks like the book report I had to do where I had to put the tea bag on the paper <laughs> to make it look old. Um, I got questions for this guy. Like, can I have some? Let's see. My student loans would be pennies to this man. Again, it went way over the estimate that, is it Sotheby's? Sotheby's? Uh, Sotheby's? Thought it was going to go for. They thought it was going to go for $20 million for the Constitution. It went for 43.6. Uh, setting a world record for any book, manuscript, or historical document or printed text. Let's see. I'm trying to see if it has like um, it's like a first edition copy. Why is that cool? That cool. Why is that 45 million? This is one of just 13 known copies of the official printing produced for the delegates of the Constitutional Convention. So they came up with the Constitution. And then everyone got a copy. They printed 13 copies probably for the leader of every colony. And this is one of those, it Whose seems was like. this one? It's a great question. Um, what year did we write that? Only that two one? copies of the first printing of the Constitution remain in private hands. Oh. When did we write that one? When did we write the Constitution? What year? 1770. Well, the Declaration was 1776, so the Constitution would have been 1778. Did they cross things out in the Declaration of Independence, like, and rewrite it nicely? 1787. God damn it, I was off by I was off by a couple of months. Summer of 1787 is when it was written. I said 1788, didn't I? 1778. So, oh, I was way off. Sorry, I did my math completely off. I flipped the numbers around yeah. in my head. So, so 1787 later, is when the Constitutional Convention convened in Philadelphia. 11 years after we became a country. It's a lawless mess for yeah, a while. I was going to say, what was happening? Well, we were at war for part of it. And then they had to figure out how to govern this newly won independence. And years later, we're still figuring it still out. Still figuring it out. Hold still on. using that piece of paper, though. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. When they wrote the Declaration, right? 
They write it out. Did they rough draft it? I'm sure they had to. Or I'm sure there were notes on someone's parchment. And then they were probably like, oh, I messed up. I spelled that word wrong. And they crossed it out. Then they got to start over. Or does the declaration, I've never, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. Uh, you know I've what? I've seen it once I bet you there was a lot of uh, feather pen note taking. Where with is a little, the little ink cup, yeah. right? And then you just, you're crossing things and out so and you're going. And then when you finally have the idea, a concrete, solid idea, then you, you, you hit the typewriter or printing press. We went to one of those museums as a field trip in <laughs> middle school probably. And I came home with a feather pen and a, a quill and an ink dip with my mom. You know, like you got money to go buy in the gift shop. According to my brother who has had to actually study the Constitution since he is a lawyer. Um, A written language wasn't standardized in 1776, so misspelling wasn't a thing. There was, I guess, no official... You just wrote things wherever you want? Yeah. Um, And yeah, there was a process, right? Which now in school. You can write whatever you want. Really? Yeah. I've talked about this before. Scotty B said that when kids put papers now, they they allow them to use abbreviations. Like, by, instead of, by the way, you can write BTW. That's fine. I actually think that's okay. In your official papers yeah. for school. Yeah. No. Why not? First of all, you've got to take up as many word spaces as possible, idiot. If there is a word count, what then that's just, that's just a dumb <laughs> move by the kid. But if it is, there are certain things in our language that are agreed upon and you almost universally recognized, right? So BTW, almost everybody knows that's by the way. So why not use it? If I understand it, it is not incorrect in any form. Right. Why not use it? Because it's not actual words. So? Isn't scuba technically one of those like weird that's words that's an abbreviation that, that's that turned into a word? An abbreviation? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. So technically that's an abbreviation. We use it as a word. Different. But, uh, but I'm saying we, we should use BTW the same way. I just can't get behind that. That's because you're... Or, oh, I was OMW in your paper you're going to write? Why not? Although I think OMW isn't as universally as accepted as BTW. They're allowed to do that. So now these teachers are like reading hieroglyphics of these papers. No, but this, and, but this is where I think it actually is a good idea. I think you allow students to use abbreviations. However... If your teacher doesn't understand the abbreviation, then you get points taken off. And that will teach them, hey, you can communicate however you'd like, but some of the things you say you have to understand not everyone relates to. No, just use the language. That no, I have. like it. I'm a big fan. BT We're dubs, baby. The English language day by day. There is no ruining of a language. It evolves. But we sound we, like idiots. We sound like idiots today compared to people who were writing the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, I'm going to start saying the date. Right? Like language evolves with the people. Language is – people don't need to be constrained by a language. A language has to evolve for the use of the people. That's okay. the only purpose of a language is so that people can communicate. And if we all agree that something – that this word or set of letters mm-hmm. means something larger – then that's part of the language. But I don't think we can all agree on that. Why not? Because. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> there, you have to realize that these kids are going to graduate, go to college, where what if that is not the rule there? Now they're just idiots. Then you have it's to just adapt. one high school on Long Island that decided to let their kids do that. that. But that's how every kid in school has to adjust at some point when they leave their high school, right? You leave your high school and you leave your bubble where things were done a certain way. And now you learn to adjust. Hopefully you adjust well with the tools that that school gave you or your parents gave you or community. But it is on the kid to adjust to their surroundings. And if you get to a college class and in your first paper you write BT dubs and the professor says, hey, you can't write that. You need to learn as a student. Okay, well, now the rules have changed. The standards are different. And I need to adjust. But I don't think there's anything wrong with a high school saying, yeah, if you want to use BT dubs, go for it. I think it's stupid. Oh, that's a good one. Fred the Mailman said we use it, et cetera, ETC. That's because no one can actually spell it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember when I, it's et cetera. Ect. No, 
No, no, it's et. Here, hold on. E T C E R A is what you're yet. saying. Yes. Oh, no, I always words. thought it was two. X. Yeah. Et cetera. Like an X. Like E X. Why would you? When I was X? a kid. Why would you put an X if it's E C T? But I don't know. Just how I heard it. Maybe it was my teachers and the way they pronounced it. But yeah, I, it was like words. in middle school or maybe even high school when I realized, hey, it was two words and there was no X in there. Et cetera is why how I would. Why what? does that say ETC versus ECT? Where are you looking? The red part. Oh, because I guess some people abbreviate it ETC and yeah. some people ECT. I don't know. I'm an ETC person. Your ETC? Yeah, because that's literally what it is. Oh, yeah, I would be too, I guess. But that's a good point, Fred. Thank you. Et cetera is a great example where BT dubs and ETC Here's the would thing, be though. Used I know firsthand if Fred the Mailman, someone brought him a note or something and they put BT dub, OMW, Lilas, whatever, he'd be like, what are these idiots doing? But again, this is the point Lab that Lab. I would make. And I don't know how Scotty B's kids' school <laughs> operates. But I would give students the opportunity to use whatever abbreviation you want. But you're running the risk of the teacher not understanding it and you getting points deducted. So it starts making the student realize, okay, I know this abbreviation, but does my audience understand it? Because that's one of the most important parts of writing is you're writing for a specific audience, right? You're not writing for yourself in case in terms of Taylor Swift journaling, is 100% writing for herself and very smart people. No, she's writing for an audience. I mean, we've yeah. all learned a lot of words thanks to her. Like what? Um, I forget. What's the <laughs> new one? <laughs> I learned so much. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so Scotty is defining or describing the difference between ECT and ETC. And he says that ETC is an abbreviation, but et cetera is Latin, therefore not an English word. So ETC is the English version. I don't know. I don't really know enough about it. How do we get down this road? <laughs> BT dubs. Stupid declaration of independence. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to take our quick break here because when we come back, we do have to talk about Carla Marie going to New Orleans mm -hmm. today. Um, and then... Dating apps have probably ruined dating forever for everyone else down the road, but it might be getting even worse. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a second. Yes. Hello. Hi. Good to see you, Carla Marie. Hello. Welcome back. Where'd you go? Nowhere. <laughs> I actually didn't go anywhere either. Um, all right. We're going to get to Carla Marie going to New Orleans in a little bit mm -hmm. because you have to be out exactly by like 9 o'clock our time because you got to go to the airport. But I want to see what people think about what's happening with dating and AI. Okay. Apparently, Twitter is rolling out a new AI-powered tool that will go through your photos on your camera and give you the 27 best pictures for your profile. How is that any different than your friends doing it? It's different because it's AI doing it. And you're not a, it's not a community activity anymore. And there are people, I've helped people yeah. pick better pictures for their profiles. We but help apparently, Jake all the time. Allegedly, it'll do things like, A, it's going to make sure it's, there's no nudity or anything. If you got any... Uh, but what if it's a bikini pic or a shirtless? It says it'll it'll... Eliminate nude or pictures that don't uh, fall within the okay the guidelines the guidelines of that app. Yes, um, it'll pick things. Uh, photo selector is the name of this new tool. It will curate a diverse selection of photos based on what works well on Tinder. Things like lighting, composition, and other similar features. And it will also um, not default to or I guess it will default to solo pictures. So if there's more than one face in there, there's there's not a high likelihood that it'll come up in your 27 best. And then from those 27, you would pick the however many Tinder allows you to pick now in terms of photos. I think my main concern is letting an app like Tinder just download the data of every single yeah. photo on my phone. And that's the thing. You do have to give it access to your gallery. Yeah, no thank you. So now it's going to analyze 
thousands of pictures. I'm just so scared of the amount of people that just click like, yes, mm-hmm. go ahead to everything. Yeah. There's not enough conversations about this when it cut co- in politics. About the access? Like, who is going to make a law that this can't happen? Yeah. Or whatever. Not this, but like. Well, no, no one. one is. No one. Yeah. Is regulating or policing AI, and it will be the end of us as a society. And, you know, I hear a lot of people, and we'll get back to the Tinder and dating thing in a while, because it gets worse than the photos. No. Um, Bumble is doing other stuff with AI and their dating app. But I hear a lot of things from people when it comes to privacy, when like people just say, oh, you can have access to Facebook or Instagram or all my photos, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. People go, well, they have all of my information anyway. What does it matter? I hear that. And my argument is usually, but you're not just making that decision for yourself. Right. When you give a company access to your messages mm-hmm. and your photos – or your emails. It's everyone else you've interacted with exactly. or have in the photo. Right. Now, every single person you've sent a text with has their, it has their texts with you uploaded to some cloud. It's crazy. It's, and that, that privacy, the only thing that's encouraging, and we'll see how long this investigation lasts or if it goes anywhere, the only thing that's encouraging right now in that space is we've talked about the lawsuit with um, the Justice Department and Apple. Which, I don't so know. the main lawsuit between the Justice, uh, that the Justice Department filed against Apple was partially the fact that they have, mon- they have practices that fall in the gray area of whether or not they're a monopoly. Mm-mm-mm. But one of the bigger problems that the Justice Department found was Apple forcing iMessage to stay behind technologically because they wanted to essentially embarrass or hurt Android users. What does that have to do with AI? It doesn't. It made Apple users less secure because they were using old technology. So if the FTC and the FCC are allowed to operate the way that they have been over the last three years, we might see some AI legislation or mm-hmm. rules at least. Um, but we'll see what happens. A lot of that depends on what happens in November. Yeah. Um, but back to back to AI okay. and Tinder what else and dating. Are these apps doing? So in this same article that's talking about the new AI powered photo mm-hmm. selecting co- tool for Tinder, the CEO, I think her name is Whitney something, mm-hmm. Whitney Wolf. Um, Whitney Wolf heard of Bumble said that they're developing a tool in Bumble where you would essentially create a dating concierge, right? So you create like a bot in your dating app, in your Bumble app, that will go through profiles for you. Well, I don't need to create the bot. They create it. Well, they, they create the bot and you use it. Okay. Um, but the idea is essentially <laughs> at some point you can – Ask this AI bot how to respond to people within nope. the dating app, right? So if we were if we were messaging back and forth, I can go, hey, I really want to impress this person, and she says she likes so and so movie. What's a date I su- I should suggest or something like that? And it'll give you an answer to then send to the person you're you're texting with. Like that, we're then, all just going to be Sims characters yeah. bumping into each other when we meet in real life. And then when you th- yeah when you think about it. Then my bot will be talking to your bot. How am I going to remember what I they'll, said? They'll each be perfecting. Well, you'll have a list of what I the things that. are being said. When you go on a date with someone and they ha- they bring yeah. up, you said this. Well, I said what? Yeah, I don't. Re- you're not going to remember that. That's true. Unless you study, right? Unless you study the chat, you're not going to remember something that you didn't say because I can't remember yeah. things that I actually do say. Um, and this is Tinder, by the way. I don't know if I mess. I said, you said Twitter. Bumble. No, no. So oh. the first one was Tinder with the AI photo right. selector. Tinder, and now this, the concierge and, like, chat services, um, that's Bumble. But what's even scarier is eventually I think Bumble wants to create, and she, she alluded to this, a situation where my bot directly talks to your bot and talks to, like, 600 others. About what? And, well, it'll, it'll basically be a dating coach for you. And then narrow down the options of people it thinks you would 
agree with more based on the conversation because that's actually like the least weird thing you've said. No, but it's mm. but you're not getting the real person, right? You're just getting a bunch of bots talking to one another. Well, if it's just bots dating, then then it's just robots. But that bot is telling you who you should and should not talk to. If they're looking at your actual human conversations, that's one thing. But if it's just a bot conversation, then why don't the bots just date? <sighs> I mean, why don't you just get married to it? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I. Um, um, what are you looking at? Well, I, I think I know that the main issue with just AI being in existence mm -hmm. is that all of these companies start to feel left behind mm -hmm. by not using yeah. it. So they're making these rash decisions to put AI in products without yeah. thinking about the moral side of it. And I forget which company it was. I talked about it in the Morning Show podcast. They recently laid off their entire, basically their moral a moral and ethics AI team okay. that they hired. Oh my God, what tech company was this? Probably OpenAI. Maybe, but like you can't just implement AI without having a team or a single person that looks at the moral side of it. Yeah. And even for us, I feel sometimes that we are, we're behind when it comes to the ways we can use AI either on the back end of our business or front facing. And it's like, if you're not using these three AI things for your business, you're going to fail. And I'm yeah. like, well. I see a lot of, because, because we are creators and there mm -hmm. are creator accounts that we follow. I see a lot of creator accounts that are like, this is how you make a viral TikTok account. And it's like, you use one AI tool to gather the top 20 TikToks of the week. Yeah. Then you create, you take that and you stack it, bro. <laughs> and you, uh, you use another AI tool to, to download all of those videos mm -hmm. and then transcribe them. And then you use a third AI tool to change the script enough where it's different than the first script but the same topic. At that point, I could have just made then, a video on my own. No, but then you take a fourth AI tool, right? You keep stacking these tools. Now it creates a digital video with a fake voice using probably 11 labs and syllabi as like a video avatar. Mm -hmm. And from the first tool to the fifth tool, there is 0% of your personality that's being put in there. They're just recreating viral TikToks or YouTube videos so that you can essentially use the viral score of the, the main TikTok creator to boost your own numbers, to recreate their videos. I can't. It's all, and that's you're getting a lot of those videos. If you ever see the videos on TikTok or Reels where it's like, uh, here are twelve dangerous. It's like it's not a person there. It's just a voice, right? And it's like here are the twelve most dangerous roads in the world, right? Those are being used. Those are being created oftentimes by those stacked tools. Whereas where you write in, I want seven viral videos, short form videos. Give me seven topics, and it'll do that and but create it on its own. That I think not right now, right? But it'll get to a point where what we do will be way more coveted because of things like that. That's what you because, hope. Because it's going to get to a point where people just become just – like humans talking will be a novelty. Humans talking uh, on video as a human, not AI, it'll – it may not be like, oh, I like this because I like it better. It'll yeah. be different. The problem is, even if it is coveted, is there money there? Because you could an, an industry only survives if there is money, if the people in that industry are making it, right? And what you said earlier about all these companies feeling left behind because yeah. they're not using AI, it's not necessarily that the companies feel like they're left behind. It's that the CEOs – know that the easiest way to boost your valuation and boost your stock is to say, oh, we're implementing AI, and this is how we're doing it. And then all the investors go, oh, my God, Salesforce has AI. iHeart has AI. Blah, blah. And then they, they invest. Uh, probably. I don't know. That's well, just the other first than company the AI radio of. post. Um, well, like the AI, the Ask Meta AI oh, it's the search worst. thing on Instagram, I accidentally hit it, and I'm like, No. I'm just looking for people. I actually, now when I search things on Google, I get really annoyed because Google now gives you their AI it's curated answer. And wrong. yeah, 90% of the time, it's, it's got some sort of inaccuracy there. And partly it's because there's so many inaccurate things on the internet and all it's doing is scouring the internet and trying to put together an answer. 
I'll use chat GPT sometimes for like prompts or recipes or, oh, hey, I'm going to the city. What should I do? Whatever. Things like that. I even tried using it yesterday because I have to come up with a bunch of ideas to um, interact with the Seahawks for social media this season. And I was like, let me just see what chat GPT mm. says. It was just like, ask them their favorite color. I'm like, goodbye. Yeah. I can't. Like, I, I cannot use this. It's, I, it's not as creative as it could be. Um, and listen, there, there are going to be really useful things that AI does. And we've been using some form of AI for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, I know. People think that it was just created like this year. I mean, most map services, most GPS mapping apps right. are using AI to help you avoid traffic or get the shortest route possible or whatever. Um, avoid lane closure, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Even the dating apps that we talked about, Bumble and Tinder, have used some sort of automated learning or machine learning to help you narrow down the people that it serves you. Wait, it's automated? Well, so you, by using the filters. No. What? Isn't it artificial intelligence? Yeah, but uh, there's machine learning, there's artificial intelligence, there's, there are multiple things that fall into the AI bucket. I know, but I'm saying, what is the A? Oh, artificial intelligence. That's the okay. official, yeah, it's artificial it. intelligence. Um, when I was writing my speech for my high school's commencement ceremony, mm -hmm. I had posted something like uh, how I hit like a, a writer's block or whatever. I swear to God, I had 100 responses that were like, just use ChatGPT yeah. to write the speech. And I was like, then they could have literally hired a, a seven-year-old yeah. to go do this. Like, what is the point? That I'm just reading ChatGPT. I'm not spending all this money to fly across the country to read ChatGPT. Yeah. And what, what people don't realize is, I, was like, I said, I am a journalism major. I cannot do that. I said, I can use it to fine-tune things. That's almost mm -hmm. no different than – how is that any different than using uh, Grammarly or any Spell of that? Spell it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. So I, I would put things in there and be like, mm, how do I shorten this? And I would pop it in, and then it would just take out six sentences, and I was like, okay, no. Uh, my brother Justin, who uh, is in the chat, mentioned something. That, and I think this is where a lot of people can use AI is he said he uses it for drafting stuff. So, I like, if you're, if you're thinking of writing a document, you can ask, you can give AI a bunch of, or you could give chat GPT, for example, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of prompts and say, hey, I'm writing a document uh, to prove why so-and-so theory is correct, whatever, or a, a speech. It will put together something, and you can use that as the framework mm -hmm of what you want to put and then put your personality into it. And I think that is a safe and fair way to use AI. You know what I always think of? It's related but unrelated. How one one time I posted, it was like January, two years ago, and I posted something like, what type of content do you want to see from me? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, whatever. And some girl responded and said, this is such a lazy question. We don't come here to give you ideas of what to post. Like, you're a content creator. It was probably influencer at that point. Figure figure it out on your own. I was like, bitch. <laughs> and now I want to be is, like. But this is you figuring out on your own. Yes. And I wanted to be like, now I want to find that girl yeah. and be like, what do you think all these creators are doing with AI? I was actually asking real people what they want to see. That's literally a focus group. Yeah. Um, all right, so Letty's giving us the three different uh, categories that fall into what we generally considered all of AI. So he says AI is remedial tasks, so you can have it complete certain tasks for you that are repeatable. Um, okay. Machine learning is predictable tasks. Okay. So if people are using an AI-powered tool to predict uh, the outcome of a sports game or a sports match mm -hmm. uh, for betting purposes, because people do that as well. And then deep learning is where programs are thinking for themselves. I don't like that one. Yeah, I don't know if anyone likes that one. And that, the other thing is that's crazy about all these companies saying like, oh, we're using AI, blah, blah, blah. I don't know how many consumers are asking for it. That, that's the thing. Right, it's like it's, it, this I is really a top-level C-suite. We're all lazy, and we can't think of new ways to create to value. Just be like, oh, look how big my wiener is. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening. And collect data. And collect data. I... I think that consumers are actually burnt out, exhausted over hearing about AI, and are and are confused. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, oh, there's AI in my Instagram DMs. What do you <laughs> mean? Like, there's so much of like. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll just I'll just keep using it. I don't know. Like and now all the I'd phone love companies. to get my mom here and ask her what about AI. That'd be fun. You should call her and just ask her and then record it. And then upload it somewhere. That's what you should actually. Next time you go to New Jersey, you should take like just on, on your phone, right? And just ask your mom, your dad, and your older siblings what define AI in one minute. I think that and just get all the different responses. I think you could ask a twenty five year old Gen Z person, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't even know how to begin to explain it. Yeah, I mean, it's also not, a lot. It's just a lot. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's such a weird thing to explain. But yes, I should do that. I also told my dad to stop because he answers every telemarketer mm. call and has conversations with them, not nice ones. Yeah. And I told him that his voice is being dubbed and used <laughs> in movies in China. It is. If he does not stop. Well, I mean, Zoom is using all of your audio and video. And someone is recording him. Yeah. And using this. Yeah. That's the other thing that's crazy is no one is regulating how much data these companies are allowed to connect. And granted, they're all private collect. companies. What? Connect is what you said. Oh, I did collect. Um, sorry, I pulled a bite in there. Uh, <laughs> how much data they are allowed to collect. He would have corrected himself, though. <laughs> and obviously, they're all private companies, so they're all allowed to do whatever they want. I don't know if we need the government coming in and, like, but they're, but, then there's no other real options, right? Like Zoom is the biggest and best option for video calls. The other option is Google. They're all taking your data. So the idea that, oh, the, the market will figure out itself, it's like, well, the market doesn't really have that many options because everyone, seven companies own everything. I'm going to go live on a small island. Yeah. And talk to no one. Did you see that the one remote, there's like some indigenous tribe Yes. That has never had internet, and it's they finally got, it's like... It's actually the saddest thing in the world. Elon gave them Starlink, or someone gave them Starlink. And then they gave them phones. And now, like, they're just all addicted to porn, it's basically. And they're <laughs> all just... It's like when, it was New York Times, I think, did a whole thing about it, and all of the comments on Instagram were like, why would you do this yeah. to these people? It was, like, heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's that they're all just, like, everyone, adults, uh, no one's communicating, nothing is getting yeah. done. It's... It made me realize, like, this is literally brain rot. Yeah. Well, it th and it did. I guess they had an, uh, some sort of emergency, and it did help save one or two people, possibly. But it was like, even the tribe, seeing people be saved with technology are starting to realize maybe the risk doesn't, isn't worth it. Maybe the, the bad parts don't. I meant to talk the about The good that. parts don't outweigh the bad parts. Yeah, it's scary. I forgot where the tribe was. I don't know, but I'm going to go find a different tribe and live there. With them? No, they got brain rot from the phones. Yeah, so you're going to go oh. live with this new tribe? Yes. Or I'm going to just buy a crappy island somewhere. Yeah. Make it nice and just sit there. If I grow I my, if I buy an island yes. and I grab my, grow my own food and I have just a little stock on medicine, what do I need? I don't I need money. I don't think as much as we dislike a lot of technological things, none of us, mm -hmm. no one in this chat, none of us are surviving without our phones at this point in our lives. Do, do you realize how hard it would be to do almost anything without your phone now? I could cook. I don't need recipes from the internet. Yeah, but, okay. You decide, you, you go to Lowe's or some, some garden center, you buy your seeds, you buy your, uh, yeah. your island, maybe a couple chickens. I'm not going to Lowe's to buy seeds. I don't know. Where, whatever you're getting the seed, you need seeds from somewhere. Mm -hmm. You go, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do? I Where are you living? No, the house will be there. Well, who's building it? It'll be pre-built. I will do it before I get there. Okay. And your house catches on fire. How do you rebuild? How do you get help? Well, there will be emergency phones. Z but uh, that's the thing. We, none of us, I really don't like think. the big red ones. We'd be able to exist without our phones anymore. I can have a flip phone. Maybe. Since they were coming in here, I was like, are we being bombarded? <laughs> uh, Lenny said, I can't use the bathroom without my phone. <laughs> I like to listen to the morning to listen to the morning show. You're podcast. allowed to use it for that. I said to Anthony that I think I'm going to start. I talked about this before. I want to put a little basket on the wall outside of the bathroom so I can dump my phone before I go. And I will see how much. Can you just put it on the floor next to the bathroom? Why do you need, why do you need a basket? Drop it on the floor. Why not? But. Whatever, it's the phone basket. Okay. And I think I can't 
Has anyone done a study to see how much more time people spend in the bathroom since phones I'm, came out? I don't think you have to do a study. I think we all just know what the answer is. It's a lot Hours of time. A day. Although I will say before, like when I was a kid, there was usually a stack of magazines in everyone's magazine. bathroom, right? Everyone. And we had this is this is the technology we had in the bathroom. We had the digital blackjack and poker yeah, we games. Had games. But even that, like, it's still. I not would play that. I would play blackjack on the toilet as a seven-year-old for for hours. <laughs> it's not as addicting as a scroll. The magazine's gonna end. Yeah, but you're st- it's still taking a long time. It's different. I mean, no one's walked into the bathroom with their phone and just never left because of the internet. They might be in there still. <laughs> Uh, it's oh Meg, God, not Meg. Megan said yes. I used to read the back of shampoo bottles and, and soaps. Me too. I got to a point when I was like 10 where I couldn't poop unless I was reading or something. Mm-hmm. So I would just start doing that. It would help me distract my brain. Okay. From reading what, the, reading from the shampoo? Happening. I read every ingredient. You think I would have become a, a cosmetic <laughs> chemist at this point. I, there was also, um, someone always had like Reader's Digest. Yep. Right, because it was like this big, and there was always a stack of them, and crossword puzzles. Yep, we had those. And then you always knew the family that didn't really have the patience for a full crossword puzzle because they, every page would have some words on it, just the ones that they knew, and then they'd give up and move on to the next page. Got my dad's fishing magazines still in yeah. there. And he will not let us throw them out, and they're years old. I'm like, well, now we just have to donate them to a museum. <laughs> One day, listen, keep them. Get into a place where after this country falls apart, you're going to need them for, like, firewood or something. <laughs> Got to heat the house with the papers. So, at this point, save everything. Uh, Run Like Husky said, I'm a get-in-and-get-out person. I wish. You know how much? I would probably would have solved world hunger by but now. You, but you say you wish. Just do it. It's hard. I did the other day. It was great. So, the person who's who finds it difficult to go to the bathroom without their phone is also the same person who's going to live on an island without their phone. Yeah, because I don't want it. I don't <laughs> want to live like this. I, that is the first step, is wanting change. Okay. Uh, real quick, because we do have to get out of here, explain New Orleans, because we're going. you're going to New Orleans on today. New Orleans and then is I'm going, a city in Louisiana. And I'm going on Sunday. Um, the capital of Louisiana is not New Orleans. It's Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Uh, okay, Red so stick. So on Monday, uh, Seattle Cocktail Club is hosting – well, they're actually hosting a bunch of events next week. Monday is the event that Anthony and I are needed for. We are actors in a game of Live Clue, and Anthony comes in on Sunday. I'm leaving with two members of Seattle Cocktail Club in a little bit. Because you've never been there before. Never I've been. at least spent a weekend there. And I knew they were going early, and I was like, well, can I come with you guys? So I'm going to be helping with some planning, mm-hmm. but I'm also going to be doing some exploring. And what what are you looking to see? Just you want to expl- explore explore the city? Obviously, like the touristy stuff, like Bourbon Street. My friend sent me some things. I am supposed to go to see the mausoleum that Nicolas Cage built for himself, and apparently lives there. So I might see him. Lives in the mausoleum, I don't or lives in New Orleans in she general. Sound like she said in the mausoleum. So I don't know. I want to have some food. I hope like so. I have a list of somebody <laughs> feed okay. fill places. Um, I guess a po' boy. Mm, those are good. A beignet. Also very good. Some, maybe some crawfish, but I don't like the idea of sucking on the head of a <laughs> crab. <laughs> so okay. Maybe not for me. Um, but got to have a hurricane and a hand grenade. There was a third drink that someone suggested. Oh, yes. Uh, a hurricane, a hand grenade, and those are both like slushy style, mm. sugary, alcoholic That's drinks. That's going to take me out. So, yeah, so I'm going to be doing those things. And I had it was literally like a month ago I had posted how I had eight or nine states left. Mm-hmm. And Louis- and everyone was, like, yelling at me. I can't believe you haven't been to Louisiana or Maine. And, like, harassing me. And I was like, okay. And then this opportunity came up. Oh, Fred the Mailman said the other drink is a shark attack. I might have to have one per day of each of these things. I would not do all three in a day. I've done that in a couple more, and it's. I don't want to be hungover. It hurts. I'm like it. It hurts a lot the next day. I wonder if AI can help me not be hungover. I'm sure I can tell you, like, a concoction of vitamins and things to drink. Anyway, uh, it will be a lot of fun. We'll both be posting from New Orleans. And uh, I think I want when I went back, or when I was thinking about going back, one of the things I wanted to do was do a little three-state road trip 
of Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Those would be checking off three for me. And I feel like I would want to end it in New Orleans. Either, yeah, either end it in New Orleans or end it in um, Alabama at a University of Alabama football game. Mm. Those would be the the bookends of the trip, I think, if I was to do that again. Because okay. I still want to go see Alabama and Mississippi. I just don't know how much there – is in those states what? to feel we like it was worth Florida, it. Florida, Bama Shore. Okay. Um, Mississippi, you got the river. <laughs> I've seen the river before. When I've been to Mississippi. When? When have you been to Mississippi? We had this conversation. You've seen the Mississippi no, River. No, I fix, confuse it with Missouri. <laughs> you have been to Missouri because you've been to St. Louis. And you've seen, and that's where you saw the Mississippi yes, River. I'm going to see it this trip too. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I might take a boat ride down it. Go for it. I don't know. I just made that up now. Wait. Fred the mailman said that nice, muggy, thick smell of New Orleans urine is going to be delightful. Yeah. I have yet. There's a, I think almost every night or definitely every night of the weekend, they basically bring a uh, giant power washing truck mm. through Bourbon Street because it, it gets so ratchet at night with just cups everywhere, pee and puke and alcohol. And they just they basically power wash the whole street yeah. every night. It's kind of wild seeing those Good. trucks roll down the road. All right, okay. it is time to get out of here. Don't forget there is a new episode of the Morning Show podcast available wherever you get your shows. And we will be back here on Twitch on Monday. We will not be doing a show Tuesday because we will be traveling okay. during yeah. our regular show hours. We're going to do a show Wednesday. Yes. We'll switch it up next week. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs>